Soil School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by The Mosaic Company. Hi, I'm Bernard Tobin. Welcome to the Soil School. Today I'm in Moorefield, Ontario, catching up with agronomist Jonathan Zettler. Jonathan, how's it going? Great. Yourself, Bernard? It, hey, it's a beautiful day here. We've got a great cornfield. We're going to talk about that in a second. But hey, I want to talk about um, you and your partner, Pat Lynch. You uh, publish the Crop Walker newsletter weekly, and a key focus is managing and unlocking your soil potential. You know, for you it starts with understanding the soil and crop inputs. Uh, tell us about that. Yes. Yeah, so. You kind of have two components when it comes to uh, making crop recommendations. One is the yield potential and the other is crop input response within the field. And you need a way of kind of marrying those two. And uh, we certainly talk about that quite a bit in the newsletter and in uh, my crop consulting business as well. It's a key focus in terms of how we make recommendations. Crop yield potential, you might have yield maps for that or educated guess um, how those areas could perform. And uh, one way of maybe managing it better than at the field level is to get into the subfield level. But that means trying to identify what the crop input response is going to be in those areas. Right. And um, today we're going to talk about knolls, mid slopes, and depressions, and how to maybe uh, make use of some of that to improve your uh, crop input budget and the return that you get from that. Right. Now, you're a big proponent of SWAT maps, soil, water, and topography, yeah. and how they marry with inputs. And, and, and this field behind us here, one of the first SWAT map fields Correct. in Ontario, Limas Farms, um, you have done a lot of work on nitrogen. Um, we've got a few graphics to show. Tell us what, you're, what you've been up to and, and how it's come together. So in this field, we variable rated the nitrogen and the seed. Um, on the field to try and maximize their crop input dollars and uh, the yield potential for those areas. So the knolls in this field this year when we nitrate test them they're about 25 uh, ppm uh, using a 12 inch sample. The mid slopes were about 40 and then the depressions came back in that 70 range. So quite a bit higher than the rest of the field. Um, Field history, depending on weather conditions, the depressions tend to flood on this property. So um, sometimes uh, yield potentials may be lower, or maybe higher. Typically, nitrogen is not the limiting factor, so why put extra there? Um, the knolls, uh, regardless of weather conditions, because of the soil type we're on, we're on a earth clay loam here. Uh, yield fairly well, uh, but they're very nitrogen responsive, so we tend to crank the nitrogen rates in those spots. Um, still lower yield potential maybe than their mid-slope positions, and, uh, but very strong um, yield potential in those spots. And so in the, the mid-slopes, that tends to be our highest nitrogen rate and strongest seeding rate because of uh, it's kind of like the Goldilocks, not, not too hot, not too cold uh, when it comes to water and uh, uh, rooting potential of the crop. So Jonathan, tell me a little bit more about yield potential and landscape positions. You know, take us through that. So whether you're working with SWAT or another system, the soil color can provide a bit of an indication on differences in crop input response and yield potential. It's not the only factor, there's topsoil depth also needs to be part of that conversation, but if you're out soil sampling in the field and you're throwing soil cores into a soil bucket and they're very different colors, um, your zones probably aren't built properly to match uh, crop input response and yield potential and you probably need to do a bit of fine tuning around that. So that's, that's one main indicator um, that the zones are built properly when you're working in the field. If you're wanting to fine tune some of this on your own farm, uh, whether you're using SWAT or another system, is to look at that soil color piece. Now, Jonathan, you've been working on this field for about five years with SWAT maps. You know, how, would you, how have you made a difference? I mean, you know, being able to understand that soil with SWAT maps and being able to, you know, combine it with managing a nitrogen, you know, input. Yeah. You know, what type of difference did you make? So in corn, we've, we've uh, probably increased the top end uh, on the field average by 30, 40 bushels in some instances. Uh, on soybeans, uh, this field, the first year that we wrote a script on it, ran 66 bushels, which was probably a farm record that year for them. And uh, they saw considerably less lodging in some of the depressions as a result of that. So 
Uh, there can be tremendous value using a system like this to micromanage, um, even coarsely to some degree, uh, your crop inputs as they're getting into the field. Yeah. Now, for farmers who really haven't really tapped into this right now, I mean, uh, from a soil management perspective, using a, a program like SWAT, um, you know, what are the low hanging fruit? You know, what, where are the responses, the crop responses? You know, what things do you point to first? So the, the two that I would probably focus on first are seed and nitrogen. And the main reason for that is uh, you can over apply maybe some of the other inputs and they'll stay in the soil to fix some of those deficiencies. You really need to fine tune seed and nitrogen. You can't over apply seed or you run into lodging issues. Um, or if you under apply it, uh, you give up yield on the table. And it's something that you need to put on every year. So nitrogen um, and seed are the two of them are probably some of the biggest crop input spend you're going to be uh, doing on a corn crop. Um, so why not do a better job of managing it? Hey, final question for you, and that is, hey, when you tie soil, water, topography, and inputs together, you know, why do you tell growers uh, about you know the return on investment, the investment on soil management yep. when, when, when you when you go to a program like this? So when you tie things together, you're flipping switches for different inputs on different landscape positions as they need to be flipped. On a whole field level, you're probably not gonna spend that much different um, when it comes to crop inputs, but you're gonna put it where you're gonna get a better return on investment. So um, typically the first year you would probably increase your money two or three times based on the cost of uh, what we're trying to do here. And that's just taking um, what we've learned on other fields and applying it. Typically, you try and put a couple check blocks in to learn some very field specific things or manage the hybrid a little bit better. And then we can uh, dial that in even more going forward. Wow. Hey, some great insights. Hey, where can growers find out more about the CropWalker newsletter? So you can go to www.cropwalker.ca and uh, you can uh, sign up for the free issues that we provide. Or uh, if you want to sign up for a subscription for the weekly newsletter, um, that's the spot to do it. Awesome. Hey, um, thank you for taking some time for the Soil School. Thank you.